be seated. Good morning. It is so wonderful to be live again and in person after three virtual graduations. So although things are a new normal, that's fine. We get to celebrate this wonderful, glorious day for all of our graduates. I am so glad that all of you could be here with these graduates to celebrate this momentous occasion. I am Margaret Swanson, chairperson of the college board, and I will lead the hooding ceremony. The practice of wearing academic regalia dates back to the colonial colleges period and was heavily influenced by European practices and styles. I think I'll take this one. Today we will award hoods signifying the completion of the Masters of Science degree. Will Dr. Kimberly Mitchell, Dean of the Graduate Program, please join me on the stage? Master's candidates, please rise and proceed behind the faculty, seating towards the stage to the right of the room. The master's hood is trimmed in an apricot velvet band distinctive of the discipline of nursing. The lining inside the hood displays the colors of the institution from which the wearer received the degree. In this case, blue and gold, the colors of St. Francis Medical Center College of Nursing. And please hold your applause until all candidates have been hooded. Bradley Bach. Nathan Cambron. Maggie Christ. Stephanie Corpus. Vishaka Diwash Rei. Zachary Drahan. Caitlin Dirtle. Jacob Fungi is unable to be with us today. Stacy Giglieri. Joseph Harborn. Stephanie Horton is unable to be with us today. Samantha Jackson. Yoli Jaramillo is unable to be with us today. Allie Juice. Danielle Lindbergh. Bethany McGraw.
Dory Mikna is unable to be with us today. Melanie Miller. Aletha Nelms. Jordan Peterson. Christine Redfield is unable to be with us today. Deborah Rodriguez. Danielle Schmidgel. Brianna Sizemore. Dakira White. Haley Wilson. Margaret Wilson is unable to be with us today. Scott Wilson. Elise Wolf. Please join me in congratulating our master's candidates. Thank you, and now we will begin the baccalaureate mass.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. i got to try that again. I don't think I heard a lot of people. Let's try this. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Much better. Let my dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment now to, to see those moments in our lives where we can thank God for the many gifts that God has given us, but also those times where perhaps we never we haven't lived out our love for Christ all that much and we need some healing and some forgiveness i confess to almighty, almighty god, god and to you my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that i have I greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in, in my words and what, what i have done and what i have failed to do through my fault through my fault through my most grievous fault Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. that all the shadows of the night may be shatter, uh, scattered by the advent of your, your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Now you are Christ's body, and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. Are we all apostles? Are we all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Strive eagerly, eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 96. Give the Lord, Lord glory and honor. Give, Give the, the Lord, Lord glory, glory and, and honor. honor. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Give, Give the, the Lord, Lord glory, glory and, honor. and honor. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. Give the, Give Lord, the Lord glory, glory and, honor. and honor. For all the gods of all the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Give the Lord, Lord glory, glory and honor. And honor. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Give the Lord, Lord glory, glory and honor. honor. Worship the Lord in his splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth, saying among the nations, The Lord reigns. The Lord is firmly established. It cannot be moved. The world is firmly established. The, it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Give the Lord glory and honor. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. They will sing before the Lord, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his truth. 
Give the Lord Lord glory and honor. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Please stand. to John. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Peter, to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
what a great honor for me to be able to preach this uh, baccalaureate mass. Uh, usually you have a bishop do a baccalaureate ma mass or a monsignor or somebody of great importance. Maybe uh, sometimes it's a president of the university. But here stands before you a, a priest who barely got a C in biology, <laughs> giving a baccalaureate mass to a bunch of new nurses and such. Um, and when I was thinking and praying about what God was going to ask me to pray about, uh, to preach about, what to say, all many ideas about do great things or go out and change the world. No pressure, huh? But I, I got a sense that the Lord was telling me, tell them one thing. Love well. Love well. One of the most fundamental truths and principles or whatever is of life is that we got a God that loves us. We got a Father in heaven who invites us and to participate in that love. Participate in that love. We live in a world that speaks much about love. I saw a sign not too long ago that says, love is all equal. Let me teach you my most favorite Italian word. Ready? Baloney. We live in a world that speaks much of love, and I and that it can be it can't just can't be true. That love is equal. There is, it has to be a difference. How does God love us? And how do I love others? How do I love myself? How do I love? is totally not the same. Too many times, I've been a priest now for nearly 25 years, and too many times people have come into my office and told me that they have, what they have done and things they did were forced for the sake of love. All love is not the same. All love is not equal. The Lord is inviting you and me and all of us to love well. It seems to me that when we come to the end of our days, wouldn't it be wonderful to hear he or she loved well? That would be a life worth living. I've loved well. Let me invite you now to love well in a particular way. Not just a general way, not just a philosophy, not just some kind of theology, but concretely a love that is objective, not subjective. Love your family. <laughs> I can't tell you how important that is. Let me, uh, let me be vulnerable for just two seconds. Last March, my mom died on March 9th, and my dad died on March 27th. And here I think to myself, I treasure every moment. No, yeah, my mom and dad were by far not perfect people. They had many flaws, many problems. And I know my brothers and I uh, love each other so much, but we are so drastically different. You know, when I was a little boy, my brothers tried to convince me I was adopted. <laughs> now that I'm 52, I think I believe them. <laughs> we are so drastically different. And we've had troubles together, misunderstandings, different understandings of life. 
and they struggle. If you struggle to love in your family, love anyway. Love anyway. You may not like things, but love anyway. Another thing is to love the people you work with. Love them well. Transformation of the world comes from the inside, and you do that by the way you love. How you teach the people that you work with what it means to be patient, to be kind, to be generous, to be forgiving. Somebody I know was told, there is something different about you. And the response was, because I was loved well. Because I was loved well. The good Lord invites us to love our enemies. To love our enemies. We all have those people. Or them. Each and every one of us. But the Lord invites us to love them. And isn't that a, a countercultural thing to do? To love those people that hate you, that patient that looks at you and calls you all kinds of names? Surely hasn't happened to any of you yet. <laughs> to love your enemy, to love them, might not like the things they do, but you love them. Love the church. Whatever church community you belong to, but at St. Francis is a Catholic institution, and we also want to love the church. The church is worth fighting for. God is worth needing you to fight for the truth of the faith. God loves you and wants you to be its defender even when the church has had some ugly things happen over the millennia. Love the gift of sacrifice. Giving your life for others. There's a wonderful story, I'll let you look it up later for yourself, but of a, a fellow named uh, St. Maximilian Kolbe during World War II. He, some prisoners decided to escape and to punish, they took 10 people from the lineup to put to death. And one fellow was going up to uh, be, uh, be put to death and he was crying because he had a family and, and, and he was, didn't want to uh, miss his, uh, die because of his family. And St. Maximilian Kobe came up and says, I'll take his place. I'll take his place. I'm a priest. And that's what convinced the soldier to eventually put him to death. He gave his life for another. Oh, we may not be called to that extreme, but God is definitely calling each and every one of us to love others more than we love ourselves. And I'm convinced when we come to that understanding of love, that love that until it costs everything, when we love this way, it shows it is not just a superficial love, but authentic and a life-giving love. Ask any parent about this kind of love. The ones who sacrificed and loved and helped you to get to this day they wanted to see you have life and have life abundantly so that you can go out into the world and share that kind of love. Love God. My dear friends, love God. 
for he has loved you so very well. In God, there is not darkness, but light. In God, there is no pain. There is no struggle. That his love, that his love can transform. My dear friends, to conclude, love well and allow yourself to be loved. My dear friends, congratulations to the class of 2021. God bless you all. Thank you for sharing your abundant gifts, for touching lives and lifting spirits. May God bless your hands because your hands are full of experience and skill. Your hands swiftly take action in need of a time of need. Your hands gently touch your patients and their families. Your hands lift the hearts of the suffering and forlorn. Your hands celebrate the joys and sorrows of life. Your hands bring compassion and love. Your hands bring healing to all those you touch. And may, all, may God bless your, you and your hands in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Are you going down? Take my hands and make them as your own and use them for your kingdom here on earth. Consecrate them to your care, anoint them for your service where you may need your gospel to be so. Let us all now please stand and let us raise our hearts and minds as we offer these prayers to our Heavenly Father. Thanksgiving to God for the blessings we have received these past two years and for the gifts and abilities that God has given us, let us pray to the Lord. And that God may anoint each of us with the Spirit to guide us in our nursing care ministry to the sick, the poor, the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Here. In appreciation for our families, friends, teachers, college administration, and staff who have supported us in our efforts, may God bless them all abundantly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That we may use the knowledge and skills we have acquired 
integrated with the gifts of caring and compassion to be the best nurses possible. Wherever our lives may take us, let us pray to the Lord. Let us remember the sick, the poor, the suffering, the lonely, the hungry, the homeless, and the war-torn, those hurting in any way. May Christ's healing love touch each of them. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us add our own personal intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most Heavenly Father, we praise and we worship you. We ask you now to send the Holy Spirit into our hearts to enkindle in us to fire your love. We ask all these prayers and all the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as the altar is prepared. Now we will begin the procession of the gifts. The nursing pin is a 1,000-year-old symbol of service to others. The nurse's pin was first awarded to the graduating nurses of the First Nightingale School of Nursing at Bellevue Hospital, New York, in 1880. It was given by the school to the students to identify them as nurses who are educated to serve the health needs of society. Since then, each school has designed its own pin. Our pin is an adaptation of the Crusader's Cross and the Fleury Cross. The undergraduate and graduate pins differ only in size. The nurse's candle, held as the nightingale lamp of knowledge, symbolizes carrying the light of Christ to the sick and dying. Florence Nightingale made rounds among the soldiers after everyone was asleep. The soldiers called her the lady with the lamp. The white linen cloth is used to symbolize the washing and binding up of wounds and caring for the sick and injured. As each class adds an embroidered symbol, all the graduates are bound together through the ages. The bread, the elements of bread, wine, and water are those that Jesus gave to us so that we might remember his example of the greatest act of love and service. In the spirit of Christ, in the example of Francis of Assisi, it is our mission to serve others with the greatest care and love in a community that celebrates the gift of life.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplished for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is is right right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he assumed at his first coming the loneliness of human flesh and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. And when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, who we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, Louis, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the love of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep safe for eternal life.
commune today, there will be three stations, one in the middle, one at that end, and one at that end. If you're not able to receive communion today because you, for some reason, such as not being Catholic, please place your arms across your front so we know to give you a blessing. Thank you.
here. Please stand. And let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth proclaiming the gospel by your life. Thanks be to God. all may be seated as we transition into the graduation ceremony. Okay, good morning everyone. Once again, my name is Margaret Swanson. I am the chairperson of the College Board for St. Francis Medical Center College of Nursing. On behalf of the College Board and staff, faculty and staff, I would like to welcome you to the St. Francis Medical Center College of Nursing graduation ceremony. The class of fall 2021 is the 68th undergraduate class and the 35th master's class to graduate from the college. The school began educating nurses in 1905, and today our graduates join over 5,000 men and women who have graduated from our diploma, baccalaureate, master's, and doctorate in nursing practice programs. Your graduation this morning continues an outstanding tradition of excellence in education and the compassionate nursing care of those in need. 
graduates, the board and I would like to say that we are very proud of your accomplishments. We look forward to you contributing to the healthcare system and congratulate you on your tireless efforts at the programs that you have just completed. We know you will succeed in this most noble profession. Here this morning to offer the commencement address and bring greetings from the Sisters of the Third Order of St. Francis is Sister Judith Ann Duval, OSF. As she comes to the podium, I will share some information about her. She has been a member of the Sisters of the Third Order of St. Francis since 1967. In 2000, Sister was appointed president of OSF Healthcare System and in October 2006, she was elected Major Superior of the Religious Congregation. She serves as chairperson of the main corporations of OSF. Sister Judith Ann is a registered nurse and has a Bachelor of Science degree in nursing from Northern Illinois University, DeKalb, Illinois, a Master of Arts with a major in Catholic Doctrine from St. John's University, New York, New York, and a Bachelor of Science in Business Management and Administration from Bradley University, Peoria, Illinois. Will you please help me welcome Sister Judith Ann. I'm the only one that gets a platform to stand on. <laughs> but it does enable me to see all of you, so I appreciate it. You know, you've come to this point in your life, a very, very important milestone in your life today. And you know, milestones are just too important not to stop and reflect, pause, and think about them and what significance they have in your personal life. You've come to this moment because of many other special moments in your life. What were they? Well, how did you reach the decision to enter the nursing profession? And then what led you to choose that path through OSF St. Francis Medical Center College of Nursing? Why is caring for people in need at a time of need so important to you that you really wanted to devote a significant a part of your life to that work? Did you ever wonder why your own personal, psychological, spiritual, and intellectual makeup has really prepared you so perfectly for this profession of nursing? Do you think that was just a coincidence, something that occurred by accident? Well, if so, then please explain to me the origin of the passion that's in your heart that led you to St. Francis, that sustained you through the very rigorous and demanding academic experience, even in the midst of this pandemic, and now gives you the courage to want to go forth and to serve in this awesome profession or to continue to serve at an even higher level now in this profession. I entered our community, the Sisters of the Third Order of St. Francis, because I was drawn to give my life to God and express that life by devoting myself to the service of the sick. I chose that for myself, but you know, I believe so strongly that it was really God who called me to that sacred ministry, really. And it's that realization that gives me such joy and confidence and fills my heart with such gratitude because I know I'm where I'm meant to be by God's deliberate design. And even though I have not actively served as a, in the profession of nursing now for several years, if you were really in a crisis, you best not ask me. <laughs> it has never ever ceased to be a very important part of who I am and always will be. It just becomes a part of who we are. The profession of nursing, you see, it's a calling. Not everyone can do what you have been brought to do or called to do, and yet God has creatively called you and formed you to prepare you for this moment. 
I'm so privileged that I can now share this precious moment with all of you. Our present healthcare environment is going to be a challenging one to step out in or to step back into, especially because it's being so systemically transformed, and now even more so because of the experience of the pandemic. And yet that's the environment that God has laid out for you for your journey in nursing. Remember your roots and never forget who it is who actually called you to this profession and led you to this most precious milestone in your life today. You are really dedicating your life to the service of human life. In my heart and mind, is there ever a higher profession than that? And by personal invitation, thank you so much for saying yes to him. If I could leave you with one thought today, it would be this. It's God who created each and every unique human life and created it in his own sacred image. And when you can acknowledge that truth, that's what's going to enable you to be able to respect each and every person you encounter to serve, regardless of how they may present to you. And only when you can come to the point of really respecting them can you ever come to the point of truly loving them and caring about them. There really is no other way. And only when you can reach that point, as Father was speaking about earlier, to truly love and care about them, will you ever be able to serve them or help meet their unique needs? There really is no other way. Because love will always be the best gift you can give and the most healing. You can have the right skills, and the professional competence, but if that is given to a person in need without a heart of compassion and love for them, it might not heal them, and it might even harm them, see? Competent, competent compassion is the very foundation on which the profession of nursing is founded, sustained, and only on that foundation can it reach its highest potential for good. You may not know what you can do to help an individual with very unique and complex situation, but love is something you can always bring. And I'll tell you, that's what the family remembers, and that's what the individual remembers, and that's always what they're most grateful for. So thank you for your love and commitment and compassion, for I know you will bless many lives in the years ahead. So how can I not be joyful for you? I will always keep you daily in my prayers and in my heart. God bless you. Thank you for that inspiring message, sister. Dr. Suzanne Brown, Dean of the Undergraduate Program, will now present the candidates for degrees. Conferring the degrees will be Dr. Sandy Soldwich and Mr. S Kevin Stevens. Good morning, College of Nursing Board and Dr. Soldwich, on behalf of the faculty of St. Francis Medical Center College of Nursing, it is my privilege to present to you the class of fall 2021. Included in this class are eight registered nurses who have, been cho who have chosen to increase their nursing knowledge by obtaining a baccalaureate degree. They, along with 43 classmates who have newly chosen the profession of nursing, make up the class of the baccalaureate graduates. 
These graduates have met the criteria of the College of Nursing for graduation and are therefore eligible to receive their bachelor's science degree in nursing. Dr. Sandy Soldwich will now confer the degree. <clears throat> Upon recommendation of the dean and faculty and by authority invested in me by the state of Illinois and the board of St. Francis Co Medical Center College of Nursing, I confer upon the candidates listed in the program and presented in this ceremony the degree of Bachelor of Science in Nursing with the rights and privileges hereto. Congratulations. the class of fall 2021. <laughs> Graduates, be seated, please. Today we will grant diplomas to BSN and MSN graduates. Dr. Sandy Soldwich, our president, will be assisted by our assistant dean of support services, Mr. Kevin Stevens, in the presentation of the diplomas. Dr. Teresa Hoadley will be sharing a bit of information about each graduate. Will the graduates from the first row please rise and proceed behind the faculty towards the stage to the right of the room. As they are moving, I ask that you hold your applause until all have received diplomas. At that time, I will give you ample opportunity to express your joy. Emily Ann Aidy, Sigma Theta Tau. Emily is, a, is from Milledgeville, Illinois. Her parents are Steve and Andrea Aidy. She, she intends to work in the intensive care unit after graduation, and her grandmother, Polly Novus, pinned her today. Emma Marie Bailey, RN, Summa Cum Laude, Sigma Theta Tau, in absentia. Skylar B. Beasley. Skyler is from Orangeburg, South Carolina. His parents are Marcy Hall and Mike Beasley. His goal is to work on LifeLight and eventually go back to school for his master's degree. And he's also accepted a job at OSF in the emergency department. His mom, Marcy, pinned him today. Brianda Nicole Bohm. Brianda is from Peoria, Illinois, and her family is Joshua Spate, Tasha Alwyn, Simon Alwyn, Brian Wilson, and Diane Wilson. She will be begin a career at OSF St. Anthony's located in Rockford, working on their neuro -tele intermediate floor. And her great-grandmother, Bertha Peters, pinned her today. Anna Christine Bowman. Anna's from Galesburg, Illinois. Her parents are Dave and Amy Bowman. She plans to work in her hometown of Galesburg at OSF at St. Mary's Hospital. And her mom, Amy, pinned her today. Jessica Ann Brisbane. Jessica is from Morton, and her parents are Rick and Leanne Brisbane. She plans to work at OSF Oncology Acute, and her mother, Leanne, pinned her today. Allison Renee Britbeck. Allison is from East Peoria, Illinois. His, her parents are Michelle and James Britbeck. She has accepted a night position in the emergency department at St. Francis Medical Center, and her parents, Michelle and James, pinned her today. Megan Ramel Brown, cum laude, sigma theta tau. Megan is married to Daniel Brown. She's from Canton, Illinois. Her parents are Jerry and Bonnie Schrote, and she's accepted a pediatric ICU at Children's Hospital of Illinois, and her husband, Daniel, pinned her today. Abigail Rose Carroll. Abby is from Pekin, Illinois, and her family includes Brian and Joanna Carroll and Luke. She's accepted a position on the Cardiac Critical Care Unit at St. Francis Hospital in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and her mom, Joanna, is pinning her today in honor of her late grandmother, Patricia, who also is a nurse. Bailey Ellen Dom, Sigma Theta Tau. Bailey is from Chillicothe, Illinois, and her parents are Bradley and Jana Dom. She'll be starting in the medical ICU at OSF St. Francis Medical Center, and her mom, Jana, pinned her today. 
Katrina Lydia Decker. Katrina is married to Brandon Decker. She's from Mackinac. Her parents are Juan and Amanda Rios. She's accepted a job on Oncology Acute at St. Francis Medical Center, and her mom, Amanda, pinned her today. Carly Christina DeMoss. Carly is from Ottawa, Illinois. Her parents are Jeff DeMoss and Carla Kellogg. After graduation, she plans to work on Mom Baby Unit in Chicago, Illinois, and her grandmother, Carol DeMoss, pinned her today. Benjamin Liam Elder in absentia. Hannah Ray Ann Freer. Hannah is from Mount Pulaski, Illinois, and her parents are Barb and Lynn Freer. She's accepted a position in the emergency department at Lincoln Memorial Hospital, and her grandfather, Lynn Freer Sr., pinned her today. Ian Michael Gibbs. Ian is from Pekin, Illinois, and his parents are Kurt and Paige Gibbs. He plans to work at uh, medical and immediate care at OSF in Peoria, and his mom, Paige, pinned him today. Hannah K. Green. Hannah is from Peoria, Illinois. Her parents are Julie Green and Gary Green. She has a job on neuroscience ICU at OSF, and her sister Haley Trier pinned her today. Kendall Renee Grip. Kendall is from Anawan, Illinois. Her parents are Chad and Tara Grip. She will start her nursing career at OSF Peoria in the labor delivery or postpartum world with plans of becoming an APRN or a midwife and Jacob Wolf pinned her today. Kimberly Ann Hampy, RN, summa cum laude, in absentia. Christopher Thomas Harmon, RN, summa cum laude, in absentia. Malia Nastasia Hart. Malia is from Normal, Illinois, and her family is boyfriend Ben Hall and mom Misha Hart. She's accepted an RN position in the ortho neuro unit at St. Joe's Hospital in Bloomington and her, tw her twin Marita Hart pinned her today. Suzanne Nicole Hightower, RN. Suzanne is married to Clint and they are parents of Nicholas Haven Clinton, Jariah and Bella. She is from Peoria, Illinois. Her Mother is Katherine Jason, and she is currently a clinical nurse supervisor at OSF Home Care and plans to continue seeking opportunities for advancement within OSF. And Katherine Jason, her mother, pinned her today. Gabriel Renee Rose Hornecker. Gabriel is, was married to Logan Hornecker on May of 21, and she is from Pekin, Illinois. Her parents are Misty and Toby Rademacher. After graduation, she plans on working on the pediatric acute unit at Children's Hospital at OSF. And Brianna Oreck pinned her today. Justin D. Hewlett. Justin is from Germantown Hills, Illinois. His parents are Gina and Derek Hewlett. He's accepted a job at OSF Children's Hospital of Illinois in the PICU, and Gail Eaton, RN, BSN, pinned him today. Caitlin Jason. Caitlin is from Mount Pulaski, Illinois. Her parents are Heidi and Patrick Miller and Lyndon Jason. She'll continue her nursing career at St. Francis Medical Center on the orthopedics acute unit, and her mom, Heidi Miller, pinned her today. Kylie Knollenberg. Kylie is from Peoria, Illinois, and her family include Holly and Troy Knollenberg and Amir Tolemat, and she plans on working on AMSU at, at St. Francis, and then do travel nursing. And Amir pinned her today. Taryn Elizabeth Lewis. Taryn's family includes Tanner LeMay and one-year-old Ronan, and also she's expecting a baby girl in January. Her hometown is Galesburg, and her mom is Stephanie Simpson. After graduation and maternity leave, she plans to work on the cardiothoracic unit at the medical center. And her mom, Stephanie S Simpson, pinned her today. Caitlin Renee Ludwig. Caitlin is from El Paso, Illinois. Her parents are Dennis and Michelle Ludwig, Ludwig, and she plans to go to Vanderbilt Hospital in Nashville, Tennessee to the medical ICU. Her mom, Michelle, pinned her today. Abby Jo Marcotte, Sigma Theta Tau. 
Abby Jo is from Yates City, Illinois, and her parents are Cindy and Stuart Marcotte. She's accepted a position at St. Francis Medical Center in the emergency department. Her mom, Cindy, pinned her today. Karen Ann Mercer, RN, summa cum laude, sigma theta ta. Karen is married to Kevin, and they are parents of Chase, Riker, and Cannon Davis. Um, her hometown is Canton, Illinois, and she plans to work in the Utilization Review Denial Specialist Case Management CDI field in Chattanooga, Tennessee area in the summer of 2022. Her husband, Kevin, pinned her today. Callie Elise Ogle, Sigma Theta Tau. Callie is from Washington, Illinois. Her parents are Jenny and Greg Ogle. She's accepted a position in the NIC and ICU at OSF, and her dad, Greg, pinned her today. Haley A. Passmore. Haley is from Lewistown, Illinois, and her family includes Jennifer Passmore and Trevor Rosenberg. She has accepted a position at Unity Point ED, and her mom, Jennifer, pinned her today. Abigail Renee Pennick. Abigail's family includes Michael Fries and Michelle Fries and Travis Pennick, her husband. She plans on working part-time at a clinic or hospital and her grandma, Lyndall Fries, pinned her today. Kristen Marie Philby. Kristen is from East Peoria, Illinois. Her parents are Camden and Seth Colvin and Jason Philby. She has hopes to go for a master's degree and is interested in becoming a nurse professor someday. Um, for now, she's interested in pediatric and mental health nursing, and her mom, Camden, pinned her today. Abby Lynn Pitstick. Abby is from Ottawa, Illinois. Her parents are Paul and Tammy Pitstick. She is moving to Orlando, Florida to pursue her nursing career and currently in the interview process and hopes to work on a cardiac unit. Her mom, Tammy, pinned her today. Angela Ray Sandoval, cum laude, sigma theta ta. Angela is married to Orlando and they are parents of Alexander and Noah. She is from Pontiac, Illinois. Her parents are Kenneth and Leanne Flowers. She'll work at St. Francis Neonatal intermediate care, and her husband, Orlando, pinned her today. Richard Neal Skelton, RN, summa cum laude, in absentia. Bradley P. Smith, in absentia. Mallory Brooke Swanson, sigma theta ta. Mallory is married to Todd, and they are parents of Reese, Emmy, Brooklyn, and Hannah. She grew up in Lakin, but lives in Morton. Her parents are Bill and Tina Hodge. She plans to work in ICU or labor and delivery and plans to get a master's in nursing education. And her son, Reese, pinned her today. Lydia Marie Templeton. Lydia is from Lawson, Illinois. Her parents are Michael and Lisa Templeton. She plans to work in, in the OSF ED and, and also is interested in life flight nursing. Uh, Michael Templeton Sr. pinned her today. Danielle Mazine Tyler. Danny is from South Pekin. Her parents are Dan Tyler and Don Chambers. She plans to work on CVICU at OSF, and her mom, Don Chambers, pinned her today, and also Sherry Park. Michaela B. Uris. Michaela is from Farmington, Illinois. Her parents are Mike and Deborah Uris. She's accepted a full time position in neonatal intensive care unit at OSF, and her mom, Deborah, pinned her today. Michelle Lynn Vandegraft, RN, summa cum laude. Michelle is married to Clark, and they have three daughters, Madeline, Sydney, and Olivia. She's from Peoria. Her parents are James and Mary Steer. She'll continue working in the care management and may pursue an MSN down the road. Her husband, Clark, pinned her today. Jenna Catherine Vestal, cum laude, sigma theta ta. Jenna is from Milan, Illinois, and her family includes William and Mary Vestal and Steele Gustafson. She's interested in cardiac nursing, and her grandma, Carol McGinnis, pinned her today. Kristen Sierra Von Baron, cum laude, sigma theta ta. Kristen is from Kickapoo, Illinois, and her parents are Brian Von Baron and, and Kelly Haley. She has accepted a position in the postpartum unit at St. Francis, Francis Medical Center, and her grandmother, Sandra Boucher, pinned her today. Taylor R. Wallerstead, cum laude, sigma theta ta. Taylor is married to William. She's from Bradford, Illinois. Her parents are Jim and Jackie Grant. Um, she's going to Crossing Rivers Health in Med Surge and Emergency in Wisconsin, and her husband, William, pinned her today. Madison Lynn Wolverton, Sigma Theta Ta. Madison is from Decatur, Illinois, and her parents are Marla and Chris 
Wolverton. She plans to be a cardiac step-down nurse at St. Francis Medical Center, and her mom, Marla, pinned her today. Heather Marie Wart. Heather is from Peoria, Illinois. Her parents are Kathy and Don Wart. She's accepted an RN position in General Peds and hopes to further her career and become a nurse practitioner. Her nephew, Christian Roach, pinned her today. Audrey Marie Wiley, RN, in absentia. Brevin Yeski. Brevin is from Bartonville, Illinois, and his family include Brock and Kathy Yeski and Helena Wyant. She, or he plans to work in medical ICU at OSF, and his mom, Kathy, pinned him today. Cassandra Meredith Zanalia, Sigma Theta Tau. Cassie is from Bloomington, Illinois. Her parents are David and Yolanda Zanalia. She plans to work at Carl Broman Medical Center Progressive Care Unit or Neuro Step Down. And her sister, Chanel Tradle, pinned her today. Jennifer M. Zuber. Jennifer is from Mount Zion, Illinois. Her parents are Laura Zuber and Keith Zuber. She wants to work either in the OR or ICU at Barnes Jewish. And her sister, Cassie, pinned her today. Now is the time. Let us show all of the BSN graduates how very proud we are of their accomplishments. College of Nursing Board and Dr. Soldwich, on behalf of the faculty of St. Francis Medical Center College of Nursing, it is my privilege to present to you the class of fall 2021. These 29 graduates have met the criteria of the College of Nursing for graduation and are therefore eligible to receive their Master's of Science degree in nursing. In addition, two graduates have earned a postgraduate certificate. Dr. Sandy Soldwich will now confer the degree. By the authority vested in me by the Board of St. Francis Medical Center, College of Nursing, and the State of Illinois, and on the recommendation of the Dean and faculty, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Science in Nursing with all of the rights and privileges pertaining hereto to the candidates listed in this program and presented here today. Congratulations. The class of fall 2021, master's students, excuse me, graduates. Everybody. <laughs> Will the graduates from the first row please rise and proceed behind the faculty towards the stage to the right of the room. Again, wait for the entire class to finish prior to expressing your joy. Bradley Richard Bach, graduating with distinction, Sigma Theta Tau. Bradley is from Hannah City, Illinois, and his parents are Richard Bach and Karen Bach. He's accepted a job as a family nurse practitioner at OSF Medical Group in Chillicothe Primary Care, and just December 8th, he passed the American Academy of Nurse Practitioners as a dual certified FNP. Nathan Patrick Cambron, graduating with distinction, Sigma Theta Tau. Nate is from Peoria, Illinois, and his parents are Matt and Nikki Cambron. He will work on the adult heart unit as a nurse practitioner in a cardiovascular surgery and critical care teams. And Bradley Bach pinned him, and Nate pinned Bradley. Maggie Helen Christ, graduating with distinction. 
Maggie is married to Nathan, and they have a daughter, Maylee. She's from Peoria. Her parents are Pat and Barb Coyle. She, she will continue to work at OSF on the acute care nurse, as an acute care nurse practitioner, and her daughter, Maylee, pinned her today. Stephanie Sean Corpus, graduating with distinction. Stephanie is married to Daniel, and they are parents to Haven Grayson, Enley, and they live in Peoria. Her parents are Sharon Stone, Charles Heaton, James, and Janice Corpus. She wants to mold the minds of current and future nurses while they're on their journey and utilizing her newly acquired skills to move forward in a leadership position. Her husband, Daniel, pinned her today. Vishaka Dewashwei, graduating with distinction. V is from Morton, and her husband is Soam Dewashwei. Her mom is Lalita Sharma. She will work in primary care clinic, and Becky Rundle pinned her today. Zachary Scott Drahan, graduating with distinction. Zachary is married to Jessica, and they have one child, Elijah. Um, he is from Deer Creek, Illinois. His parents are Mike and Robin Drahan. He will be an APRN at OSF Glen Park Internal Medicine and Pediatrics, and Jessica pinned him today. Caitlin Beth Dirtle, Sigma Theta Tau. Caitlin is from San Jose, Illinois, and um, she has a daughter, Tori, and family member, John Quinones. Her parents are ben Bill and Penny Dirtle, and John Quinones pinned her today. Jacob Daniel Funk, graduating with distinction in absentia. Stacy Renee Glary, graduating with distinction, Sigma Theta Tau. Stacy is married to Matthew Glary, and they have four daughters, Ella, Eva, Kaya, and Amelia. She is from Washington, Illinois. Her parents are bon Bonnie Zapita and Jim and Mary Kay Glary. After graduation, she'll be working with Dr. Elwood's team at the Cosmetic Plastic Surgery of Illinois, and her twin, Erin, pinned her today. She was one of the first NPs to graduate from our program. Joseph D. Harborn, graduating with distinction. Jesse is married to Sarah, and they are parents of Rhett, Rowdy, and Baby H that's due in 22. He's from Manitou, and his parents are Tony and Safford Bortel and Todd Harborn. He's going to pursue a career in cardiovascular intensive care as a nurse practitioner, and his son, Rhett, pinned him today. Stephanie Lee Horton, graduating with distinction in absentia. Samantha Joyce Jackson. Samantha is married to Ernest Jackson III. She's from Peoria. Her parents are Randy and Sandy Minis. Her professional plans are to continue working and serving with OSF Healthcare as a nurse leader who occasionally takes a fun vacation. And Ernest pinned her today. Yoli Bernice Jaramillo, graduating with distinction in absentia. Allie Marie Jose, graduating with distinction. Allie is married to Josh Joe. She's from Tremont, Illinois. And her parents are Lori Benovich and Jim Meeks. She plans to work in cardiology as an APN. And her father, Jim, pinned her today. Danielle Nicole Lindbergh, graduating with distinction. Danielle is from Morton, Illinois. Her parents are Janet and Dave Lindbergh. She plans to pursue a career where she can serve as an educator to motivate and inspire others and also be inspired though by those she educates. And her mother, Janet, pinned her today. Bethany Amber McGraw, graduating with distinction. Bethany is married to Danny, and they are parents of Ava, Emmy, Isla, and Jep. She's from Knoxville, Illinois. Her parents are Missy Fitzpatrick, and she plans to work in the pediatrics in a rural community, and her husband, Danny, pinned her today. Dory Ann Mikna in absentia. Melanie Ann Miller, graduating with distinction. Melanie is from Pekin, Illinois. Her parents are Owen and Jane Miller. She's accepted a nurse practitioner position with Graham Health Systems in Canton, and her mother, Jane, pinned her today. Aletha L. Nelms, Sigma Theta Tau. Aletha's family includes Airman Raymond Mabels, Taylor, Jameson, Zidavia, and Delvis, and she is currently living in Peoria. Her parents are James and Carolyn Nelms, and she wants to work in primary care to the underserved community. Her mom, Carolyn, pinned her today. Jordan Lee Peterson, graduating with distinction, Sigma Theta Tau. 
Jordan is married to Austin. They have a son, Mac. She's from Anawan, Illinois. Her parents are Lauren and Valerie Jackson. She plans to work at OSF Galesburg Internal Medicine, and her husband, Austin, pinned her today. Christine J. Redfield, graduating with distinction, Sigma Theta Tau, in absentia. Deborah M. Rodriguez, Sigma Theta Tau. Deborah is married to Jim, and they are parents of Dana, Kaylee, Susan, and Brandon. She is from Washington, Illinois, and her parents are Earl and Ilsa Holt. She plans to work in clinical education, and her father, Earl, pinned her today. Danielle Marie Schmidgall, graduating with distinction. Danielle is married to Eric, and they are parents of Manning, McCoy, and Monroe. She is from Morton, Illinois, and her parents are Kurt and Lori Ulrich. She's accepted a position in OSF Pediatric Group in Morton, Illinois, and her husband, Eric, pinned her today. Brianna Edward Sizemore, graduating with distinction, Sigma Theta Tau. Brianna is married to Michael, and they are parents of Waylon, Bambi, and Bertie. She is from Lincoln, Illinois, and her parents are John and Karen Bodie. She will work as a nurse practitioner in urology, dermatology, or primary care, and then eventually open her own traveling wound clinic that serves low-income areas. Her grandmother, Mary Edwards, pinned her today. Dakira Kanisha White, Sigma Theta Tau. Dakira is from Peoria, Illinois. Her parents are Jenny Jackson and Dominic White. She plans to work in urgent and palliative care upon completion of boards, and her mom, Jenny Jackson, pinned her today. Haley Elizabeth Wilson, graduating with distinction. Haley is married to Scott, who's also in the FNP program. Their children are Delaney, Gia, Easton, and Briggs. She's from East Peoria, Illinois. Her parents are Michelle and Jason Monagle, and Rod and Amy Brewer. She would love to work in primary care where she can establish an ongoing relationship with patients. And her mom, Michelle, pinned her today, who is also a nurse. Margaret Haley Marie Wilson, graduating with distinction in absentia. Scott Randall Wilson, graduating with distinction. Scott is married to Haley. They live in East Peoria. His parents are Jill Bosarge, Joe, or George Bosarge, and Randy and Jan Wilson. He plans to continue his career as a nurse practitioner in a primary care or cardiovascular services, and his mom, Jill Bosarge, pinned him today. Elise Christine Wolf graduating with distinction, Sigma Theta Tau. Elise is married to Joshua, and they are parents of Jackson, Jace, and Jameson. She's from Anawan, Illinois. Her parents are Lauren and Valerie Jackson. She will be working in a family practice in Hammond Henry Hospital Medical Group, and her husband, Josh, pinned her today. Now is the time. Let us show all the MSN graduates how proud we are of their accomplishments. The following graduates have earned a postgraduate certificate. Emily Ann Corona and Brianna Renee Mitchell. Graduates, please place your tassels on the left side. One more round of applause for these graduates. Congratulations. Job well done. Now at this time, Dr. Soldwich will announce the recipients of some special awards. The Excellence in Nursing Award was established by the faculty of the College of Nursing for the purpose of acknowledging and fostering a commitment to the ideals of professional nursing. Consideration for the award is based on involvement and contribution to the college, community, and professionals in relation to the following criteria. Dependability, accountability, enthusiasm, leadership, citizenship, caring, positive attitude, and being a professional role model. 
For the fall 2021, the recipient of the Excellence in Nursing Award is Bailey Dom. Please come forward to receive your award. The Nursing Achievement Award recognizes an RN graduate. Nominees are considered on the basis of involvement and contribution to the college and community. The recipient of the Nursing Achievement Award is Kimberly Hampy, RN, in absentia. The Sister Mary Laguerra Memorial Award recognizes an MSN graduate. Graduates are considered for this award based on the following criteria. High academic achievement, as evidenced by graduating with distinction. Excellent leadership abilities, demonstrated by serving as a positive role model to others. Being willing to mentor or tutor other graduate students. An innovative approach to issues. Professionalism is shown by maintaining integrity, high ethical standards, and by being an asset to the profession of nursing. A consistently positive attitude and a willingness to go above and beyond is demonstrated by this person. The recipient of the Sister Mary Ludgera Memorial Award is Bradley Brock. Please come forward to receive your award. Samantha, Samantha Jackson, will you please come forward to lead the graduates in saying the Nightingale Pledge. The Nightingale Pledge, found on the back of the graduation program, was first used by Detroit, Michigan's Harper Hospital's graduating class in the spring of 1893. This pledge is an adaptation of the Hippocratic Oath taken by physicians. There is no evidence that Florence Nightingale had input or knowledge of its content. However, it bears her name. Today, our graduates will pledge a modern adaptation of that pledge. Graduates, please rise. I solemnly pledge myself before God and in the presence of this assembly to value the process of caring and faithfully practice my profession of nursing. I will do all in my power to maintain and elevate the standards and practices of my profession I will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping and constantly endeavor to increase my knowledge and skills in nursing. I will endeavor to fulfill my rights and privileges as a good citizen and promote the health and welfare of the community. I will actively work to safeguard and promote the health and happiness of mankind. You may be seated. Before we close today, I'd like to have Dr. Soldwich join me on the stage, please. Uh, Dr. Soldwich, Sandy Soldwich, came to us three years ago as president of the College of Nursing. And this is her last graduation ceremony as she gets to join the ranks of retirement at the end of this month. So on behalf of the college board, Sandy, We'd like to thank you for your efforts, all you have done to advance the mission of the College of Nursing, and we hope you have a wonderful, wonderful retirement. Thank you.
As Father Donald Rusk Ruskowski comes up to close the graduation ceremony by blessing our new graduates, we want to thank Father and the co-celebrants for the, this baccalaureate mass. We also want to thank Laura Nelson and the River Valley Brass for the beautiful music and Sam Sprecher for the vocal selections. We have had a wonderful morning. It is so wonderful to be back in person again. And again, we thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy this glorious day. I hope your hearts are preparing for the love of the birthday of a king in a couple of weeks. And I hope you all have a wonderful and beautiful blessed Christmas. Following the blessing, Father Donald Ruskowski will lead the procession out of the ballroom. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Let us pray. O oh God, from whose hands we have received the medicine of eternal life, grant that we may glory in the fullness of heavenly healing. O oh God, a protector of all who hope in you, bless your people, keep them safe, defend them, prepare them, that they may persevere always in your love through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 